So I'm going to have here a ramp just like we saw, a box with mass M here angled at some angle theta. It's going to be one of those, con not conceptual questions, but answers with all the variables in them that all the students hate. And I'll tell you the secret to solving any question that has variables like this and no actual numbers is literally the exact same way you solve any other physics problem. You don't need the numbers to solve physics problems. As a matter of fact, if you were to so if I were to give you the mass is 10 kilograms and the angle is 30 degrees, you don't have to plug in 10 kilograms and 30 degrees until the very end of the problem. There's really no reason why these problems are any more difficult because you solve them in the exact same way. And if we remember how we solve force problems, it first involves drawing a free body diagram. And actually, I didn't even finish drawing out the problem. We have a box on a ramp. Got to have myself there for a second. We have a box on the ramp angled at angle theta, and we have a rope T, a rope T with tension T keeping this box from moving. In other words, its velocity is zero. It's not moving because of the rope. Now, and this is a right triangle, and if we think about the forces acting on this box, obviously we have tension T in the rope here pointing up and to the right. We also have gravity, and which way is gravity point? It always points straight down, and you can call gravity Fg if you want. I always call gravity Mg because that's what the force of gravity is. It's mass times its acceleration of gravity, G. And then the only other force that we have to worry about is the normal force, which always points perpendicular to the surface, and I call that Fn for F normal. And now we have all three forces that we care about, and then remember the next step, since it's a ramp problem, we're going to rotate the diagram. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to rotate it by theta degrees. And here's what we're looking at now. Again, flat surface, box with mass m. Think about which way the forces point now. Which way does the tension point? Well, if I look back at my rotated diagram, now it looks like tension points straight to the right. So I'm going to draw tension then straight to the right. Similarly, my normal force is now going to point straight up after I rotate it. So normal force points straight up. And then gravity no longer points straight down. Does everyone see that? Like if I rotate my diagram like this, gravity now points down and to the left. And so when I draw that now on this diagram, I'm going to draw it down to the left, but I'm going to make it much bigger than, you know, the other vectors. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to split this one up into components and I want to make it really big so I can show you guys what I'm doing. So again, we need to split this up into its y and x components. And now we need to kind of ask ourselves, hey, where does the angle theta go? Does it go between here and here? Or does it go between these two lines? And I'm not going to tell you the answer just yet. I'm going to actually prove it with the geometry the first time. And then for the future, I just want you to memorize it because it's kind of a pain. I don't want you guys to be deriving geometry in the middle of your physics test. That'd be horrible. So here's what I want you guys to think about. Back to this triangle. That angle's theta. If we draw a new triangle with mg and theta, notice we have a right angle right here, which means this angle right here, that angle is going to be 90 degrees minus theta. And think about where that corresponds now on this graph, right? Like if I rotate it like this, oh, that angle looks a lot like that angle. And that's why this angle is 90 minus theta, 90 degrees minus theta, which then means since these are complementary angles and they both add up to 90, that means that this one is going to be the original angle theta. So what I want you guys to remember, and this is always going to be true whenever you rotate the ramp, that angle theta goes in between the hypotenuse, mg, and the imaginary vertical line that goes down the center. It's between those two. And it's going to be that way every time, so I'd recommend, recommend just memorizing it. And so now if we think about the x and y components, which is at the end of the day what's most important, the component going straight down is that going to use sine theta or cosine theta? Well, if we think about the triangle that we can form here, the right triangle, that theta is adjacent to my y component, which means the y component is going to be mg cosine theta. 
and therefore the x component, which is going to be the same as if we were to redraw it down there, is going to be mg sine theta, right? So we, now we have our two components. We have our, our hypotenuse too, but we don't care about the hypotenuse anymore because we have our components. And one more thing I quick want to mention is that notice in the past that in the x direction, we've always had mg cosine theta, but now we have y direction have mg cosine theta. And that's why I've been saying it from day one. You really don't want to focus as x is always mg cosine and y is always mg sine because it's not always the case, as we can see right here. What I always want you guys to think about is where is the angle, then look at the components. Is that the adjacent component or the opposite component? If it's the adjacent, it's mg cosine, and if it's the opposite leg, it's mg sine. Always think of it in terms of sine, cosine, opposite, adjacent. Never think of it like x is automatically cosine, y is automatically sine, because it can be either one. It really depends on where that angle goes, okay? So now we have mg, we have it split up into components, and believe it or not, that's all encompassed under step one, which is to draw the free by diagram and split things into their components. Once we're done with that, we're actually, I would say, most of the way done the problem. Not, not all the way, but at least halfway there for sure. The next step is to write a sum of forces equation in both the x and the y direction. And so for the x direction, for the x direction, it's going to be all the forces to the right, and if we think now to our modified free by diagram here, the forces to the right, there's only one, and that's tension T. So T, and then any forces to the left, well, we look down here, this component points to the left, right? It will be minus mg sine theta, and then that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. The acceleration in the x direction. And let's think about the acceleration for a second. Do we know the acceleration? I really want you to think about that for a second. Do we know the acceleration? Remember, acceleration is change in velocity. And since we're talking about the x direction, what is the change in velocity for this box in the x direction, in the direction parallel with the ramp? And remember, this velocity is zero, right? We said that from the beginning because of this tension is holding it in place. If its velocity is zero, it's not moving, which means that acceleration is just zero. And actually, it's also going to be zero in the y direction, too, as we'll see in a moment. So we have t is equal to mg sine theta, and that's if I add mg sine theta to both sides. And actually, if we think about what the problem was initially asking, I wanted to know what the tension in the rope was. And we can actually stop right there, we have our answer. We didn't even need to go into the y-axis for this problem because I was just asking for t. But let's go into the y-axis just to see what it looks like. So in the y-axis, it's similar. It's all the forces going up. So we look at the forces going up. Just one force, normal force, Fn, minus the forces going down. There's only one force going down, and that's the y component of mg which is mg cosine theta, so minus mg cosine theta. And again, we're setting that equal to ma. And since this is the y direction, we're talking about the y component of acceleration. But remember, this thing isn't moving up or down or left or right in this case. The acceleration in both directions is just zero, which means if we were to then, I guess we could also solve for normal force here, because normal force is now just equal to mg cosine theta, and we have mass, we have gravity, and we have theta. So then we would also know the normal force if we were asking for that. And that's exactly how you would solve any ramp problem. Of course, there's no two physics problems are the same, but this does give you the strategy and the secret, which is to really just rotate the diagram, and that's how you're going to solve the secret to solving any ramp problem. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.